Let me paint you a picture of an inspiring future for our world. It's a future that began right here in the headwaters region of the Great Amazon River between Ecuador and Peru. The year is 2041. The age of extraction has finally given way to the age of Buen Vivir and a beautiful bioeconomy is thriving around the globe. I'm here looking back at how we protected this rainforest and in doing so, transformed the world. To reach this future, we had to start by facing our past. Thousands of years ago, my Amazonian ancestors already knew that the earth is alive and that this forest is its beating heart, something only recently discovered by science. And because they saw the world as alive and themselves as an integral part of her, they lived by an ethical code of harmonious coexistence and reciprocity with nature, known as Buen Vivir. But then the conquest happened and the wisdom of Buen Vivir was all but lost. The world I was born into had been shaped by Spanish invaders who cast aside the principled aspirations of Buen Vivir and promised progress through plunder. For centuries, the many disparate indigenous nations of the Amazon and their living forests were pillaged and destroyed in the name of progress, development, and profit. We were reduced to fighting over artificial borders brought by colonization and the newborn republics. People were taught to see our nation's wealth only in what could be extracted from the ground, first gold and later minerals, timber, and black gold. But in the year 2019, the same year millions of acres of rainforest were burned down, the UN-sponsored science panel for the Amazon issued a severe warning that the Amazon was reaching a tipping point that would trigger a massive dieback on the entire forest with catastrophic impacts for the future of humanity. It was finally accepted as scientific fact that the Amazon forest acts as a beating heart of the earth, circulating rain around the planet and regulating its temperature. The scientists were starting to understand what we've been saying all along. They joined us in acknowledging that at least 80% of this rainforest must be left standing to prevent the collapse of the entire planet's circulatory system. Though the forest was burning, the spirit of our people burned brighter. Once divided, the people of the region now united to issue the Amazon Sacred Headwaters Declaration. Put forth by the largest alliance of indigenous Amazonian nations ever assembled, their vision was ambitious and inspiring. To have these highly biodiverse headwaters of the Amazon River Basin recognized as permanently protected bioregion, a territory demarcated not by current political borders, but by its natural and cultural boundaries. The declaration called for a ban on industrial scale resource extraction and instead mapped pathways for a just transition to a new regenerative bioeconomy. The formation of the initiative was an unprecedented step towards indigenous rights and stewardship. But it was just the beginning of a long journey. Before we could catch our breath from the fires of 2019, COVID erupted, killing millions around the globe. The pandemic helped expose inequity and fragility of the current economic system. People everywhere were fed up and ready for something different. But exactly what that was, was still not clear. And like heeding a call, 2021 brought global shifts in the right direction. The U.S. rejoined the rest of the world in the Paris Climate Agreement, and even China committed to zero carbon emissions by 2060. Then, the Sacred Headwaters Alliance unveiled its bioregional plan, which laid out in detail the solution pathways that would protect the region and transform its economy to prioritize the well-being of ecosystems and communities. From local food sovereignty to green transportation and renewable energy, the plan inspired people from all sectors to innovate a new type of progress guided by the ancient Buen Vivir philosophy. There was much to do. First, we identified that the GDP is a flawed measure of progress that incentivizes destruction. So in 2022, inspired by Bhutan and New Zealand's happiness index, we created an alternative metric the Buen Vivir Index, BVI, a new set of ecological and social indicators to measure the true wealth and health of nations. Soon after, a significant number of governments, including Peru and Ecuador, signed the Fossil Fuel Non-Proliferation Treaty to phase out the production of fossil fuels by 2030. Ecuador and Peru agreed to permanently leave untapped fossil fuel reserves in the ground. 
In exchange, China and the IMF negotiated the largest ever debt forgiveness package. Oil revenues were no longer needed to pay interest on national debt. Established to support the bioregional plan, the Sacred Headwaters Fund received over a billion dollars in funding from around the world in its first three years. Standing forest work programs aimed at halting deforestation were launched, including enforcement and restoration initiatives transitioning thousands of oil workers to new bioeconomy jobs with equal pay. The newly formed Indigenous Youth Corps flexed their tech sovereignty by deploying new apps for monitoring the territory and cataloging its biodiversity, the highest levels registered anywhere on Earth. By 2024, ecological restoration made up the largest number of new jobs. That same year, the Peruvian government finally recognized indigenous peoples' ancestral land claims to the Sacred Headwaters region, guaranteeing protection of more than 22 million acres. Led by Peruvian youth in 2025, social movements voted for Buen Vivir candidates, and the constitutional amendment that recognizes the rights of nature was passed. The Buen Vivir movement was transforming worldviews, priorities, and policies. That's how, in 2026, Ecuador and Peru officially agreed to establish the protected Sacred Headwaters Bioregional Sanctuary, governed by a plurinational council that included the 30 indigenous nations from the region. A shift in culture was palpable as the heart of the world pride movement spread from the Andes to Brazil. The Forest Wisdom University opened in 2027 with just 10 faculty and 38 students. By 2028, BVI was adopted as a key policy by the progressive political parties in Ecuador and Peru. The Green Frontiers program invested in municipal and provincial governments of small Amazon frontier towns to implement eco-urban redesign plans, all done by planners who graduated from the new School of Applied Bio Principles at the Forest Wisdom University. Ecuador and Peru finally reached their goal of 100% renewable energy in 2031. That was the first year no fossil fuels were extracted or imported to run the country. With a rising BVI, there was little argument for returning to the extractive economy of the past. The bioregional movement continued to sweep through the continent and by the end of the 2030s had begun to transform the rest of the globe. Today, Governance, local decision-making, and economic activity everywhere is being reorganized around the goal of maintaining the health and integrity of ecosystems, communities, and families. Inspired by what started here, the world has come to study with elders and their young apprentices at the Forest Wisdom University. Over 150,000 students are enrolled, studying everything from bioregional planning and regenerative economics to ethnophilosophy, integrative medicine, and agroforestry. Looking back from 2041, I am so grateful for the brave souls who had the courage to look into their turbulent past so they could create a harmonious future. <laughs>